Okay, let's begin all up. Let's begin with our first team, Team A. You can start whenever you're ready, and we'll start the time when you begin presenting. If you are looking for a valuable stock to invest in, there is one long-standing company that has a strong business fundamental and continuously improve its operation. It stands strong amid the pandemic, and this is PTT, the Thailand's leading comprehensive energy provider. Good morning, respective judges. We are Team A, and today we issue a buyer recommendation on PTT stock with a target price of 20.6 baht, presenting 30% of size. PTT has operated seven business units, mainly oil and retail, LPG retail, and food and beverage. Its target customer is commercial vehicle. For the nine month revenue, oil business contributes 196% of its total revenue, driven by marketing margin, but the non oil revenue contributes for 4%. But why PTT deserves a buyer recommendation? There are three key reasons P, for prominent fundamental, T, for thriving margin expansion, and D, for growth opportunities to capture. Now let's look into the first reason. PTT has continuously improved its operation as well as expand its store expansion with a strategic location along the minor roads, which enable the company to differentiate itself from other competitors. And by acquiring and renovating all service stations, PTT can reap the benefit from lower capital expenditure. Also, the company has invested in 1010 farms spanning across the country, as well as its own logistics system, which can charter delivery time and lower transportation costs than back home. Moreover, PTT has a joint venture in PPP Green Complex, which is the first fully integrated farm complex in Thailand. The increasing sales of biology sales will enhance PTT bottom line through shares of profit from associates. These superior vertical integrations have made PTT outstanding from its peers. First, PTT is in the first rank in terms of number of service stations with the lowest inventory day. Moreover, PTT is the only company that can maintain positive oil sales volume growth during the pandemic, proving that it is resilient to shock. And the historical data also shows that PTT has maintained and continuously improved its performance with an increasing revenue and a profit margin, positive free cash flow, hence resulting in a high dividend payout ratio. Next, my colleague will walk you through the second reason. PTT not only has a strong historical performance from its main business, but it also expands its portfolio into LPG and also non oil business such as convenience stores and food and beverages. As all Thai factory agents, incorporating non oil business will boost profit margin. So, why LPG? The marketing margin of both household LPG and auto LPG are higher than the oil industry, and even the LPG demand gradually dropped. PTT surprisingly expanded the gas shop to reap a benefit to be a dominant player in the LPG industry. After entering this industry, the sales volume keep rising and the market share keep increasing to 11% in 2020. The five year revenue growth rises with a of 34%. What about other non oil business, convenience stores, food and beverages are the highest crop profit margin business, about 33% of the revenue. The aggressive store expansion of Patai and the convenience stores Maxma leads to the five year revenue growth of 25%. Therefore, the expansion of the non oil business leads to the overall gross profit margin expansion. And along with the reduction in selling and administrative expense from cost cutting policy, it will boost the EBIT margin and net profit margin further. Given its solid fundamental, PDG has high potential to capture growth. Start with a key profit driver for all retail. Marketing margin remain high at 2 bar per liter, and the government will not intervene as diesel is still below the cap price. So, PDG, the second largest oil retailer, will gain more class profit. Second, CPO price increase along with the new government mandate that set B10 as new primary diesel, with a higher price and growing demand, we absorb an improvement in profit from holding a 40% stake in PPP Green Complex. Apart from the short-term growth, we also foresee the long-term growth. First, provincial areas in the north and northeastern expand higher than the overall Thailand growth. This by arising demand, but supply is limited, as independent oil retail is still large. So, PG, the dominant in these two regions, can expand more to meet the higher demand. 
Second, for car retail, all the grocery in the service station become a new going retail channel. However, market penetration is still low. So, the abundance of PT service station will become a platform for Maxmart and Pantai to expand. And third, by all of consumption and production increase, followed by the government plan, this will benefit PTG as it targets the diesel user. Also, PPP Green Complex is competitive because of large capacity. To sum up, PTG has the potential to capture both short-term and long-term goal. By taking into account a positive outlook in oil business, the ability to capture non-oil growth and a cocoa station non-oil store expansion, we expect a revenue growth of 6.7% CAGR and a bottom line growth of 16.6% CAGR driven by increasing biodiesel share profit as well as improving operational efficiency as the net profit margin will expand by at least 90 basis points. The store expansion and profitability are well supported by a healthy balance sheet. From PDG Business Fundamental, we expect a growing free cash flow based on its low level of capital intensiveness and a strong negative cash cycle. And we expect to see a potential deleverage, which will provide a future financial flexibility on debt financing. Despite low leverage, ROE will be primarily driven by improving operating performance, and we believe that PTG will going to maintain ROE over all peers. Given the uncertainty of oil price fluctuations, we derive a price to earning base target price of 20.6 baht from a P multiple of 17.3 times based on a negative one standard deviation of five year PE band, as we forecast that the econ economy and oil demand are yet to recover. Furthermore, our valuation also in line with the forward multiple valuation of local and regional peers that we select based on a similar business landscape that operate in midstream and downstream located in the Asia Pacific. From our football field valuation, all other methodologies that we have conducted still confirm a buy recommendation. And for a more comprehensive valuation, we conduct a sensitivity analysis and most of the cases support our investment strategy. We have identified the key risks that PTG is exposed to. First, our production restriction may be prolonged and leads to an increase in oil price which can lower the marketing margin of PTG. Second, if oil price rapidly increase, the government may intrigue the adjusting the ceiling of marketing margin. However, we estimate that PTG will be able to charge at least the margin of 1.65 baht per liter, where the company still deserve a buy recommendation. And third, the risk of COVID-19 is applied to a worst scenario analysis, where we assume that the pandemic will persist until the end of this year which may result in lower than estimated revenue of PTG. However, the company will still yield a 9% upside, even in its first scenario. We also incorporate ESG analysis into our consideration. The company has many policies to relieve energy consumption, resulting in decreasing energy expenses for employees. PTG also emphasized on social aspects by values the relationship between the company itself, the customer, and the community. And lastly, its board of directors are experienced and abide with the regulations set by the SEC. Comparing to its peers, PTG has the best governance score and ranked second for overall ESG score among the domestic peers, with third consecutive year list HSI and fourth ranking among the regional peers. With prominent fundamental thriving margin expansion, growth opportunities to capture an exceptional ESG score, our valuation also shows 30% of sight where the downside is limited. Ladies and gentlemen, we can reaffirm that PTG One deserves a high recommendation and it's time to let PTG be the growth engine to your portfolio. Thank you for your attention and the floor is open for the question. Can begin the Q&A session. Uh, can you go back to the share price chart? So first of all, good presentation. Thank you for that. And uh, to me, in some ways, this share price just looks flat. The only place that it really looks exciting is that, re that red line. So right now, according to that, 
uh, it's not that exciting. What do you see are the catalysts that will cause this upside to be realized? Like, what is it that the market doesn't see as clearly as you see now after doing a lot of research on this company? To answer that question, the market regards PTT as a laggard stock, which its price doesn't adjust as fast as other stock. And PTT is a small to medium capitalization company in the energy sector. So we think that the market may underestimate its performance. We have thoroughly <laughs> analyzed this stock in terms of qualitative and quantitative aspects. And we see that, as you can see from the earning per share, our forecasted earning per share in 2021 is at 1.19 baht, which is bullish than uh, other consensus. So the implication is that we believe in its resiliency and ability to recover fastly. Can you just, just, just try to focus on like kind of one thing that you see? Because right here we can see that most of the market's not seeing what you see. And I'm telling you, you did a more complete research report than all of those. So tell me, what's that like one thing that we should focus on that you see that they don't see? We believe in its resiliency and ability to recover from current situation. So what we can see is that under the stormy sky, PTG is one of the rising stars. For your ESG slide, can you identify the most material E factor and why? Thank you for the question. For the environmental part, we believe that the energy efficiency of the company is one of the best compared to it peer. Second, the waste and hazard material management of the company. Also, the company also uh, manage the waste efficiency very well. Third, the company consider well about the health and safety of the, of the employee since the accident case in 2019 is zero. And fourth, the company strongly valued the community relation. It had many policy and actually Just stick to the environmental, just stick to oh, environmental. Okay. It's just one factor, please. For the energy efficiency, we believe, we believe that the company managed the energy efficiency very well. Even the, the company, the industry of the company is considered as a hazard to the environment. PTG has many policy to reduce the environmental impacts. So for example, PTG has a uh, reduced energy consumption by installing the solar cell panel in the service station. Moreover, the PTG also has a um, renewable energy business with their own waste power plant. Actually, I have a question and also related on the environmental issue as well. So if you look at the uh, PTG business, right, you can see that majority of the business relies on the diesels. Right? And if, you, if, if you see what happened in European Union right now, diesel is one of the most polluting fuel sources. So I mean, going forward, you're selling what is against the trend in the world. So is this, is this how do you address this risk? So we see this as an emerging trend as well, and we consider this to the company as a risk. So we think that the green energy trend is coming both around the world. And another trend is that the EV trend as well, that many countries try to adopt. But the EV trend in Thailand is depending on the government policy and also the readiness of the infrastructure in Thailand. And we also consider this as our analysis and we will break down this into short term and long term impact. For short term, if you like look at the statistics, you will see that of the total EV car in Thailand, just only 2% is, co is commercial vehicle, while more than 90% is a passenger car. And if you look at the main target group of the PTG, PTG mainly target the commercial vehicle. So we think that in the short term, this trend will not pose a significant impact on the PTG. And also, we think that in long term, PTG can adapt well with this trend since the PTG start to implement the EV charging station. And we think that in the long term, it can expand more because of high financial flexibility, in which my colleague will elaborate more on this point. 
So in terms of the debt capacity that the company can uh, in, increase it into 1.5 times as, as it targets. So from this, the company will get about 10 billion baht from increasing debt capacity. And from our research and compare with the peers uh, budget allocation for EV project, which cost about 10 to 30 billion baht, this will be enough to implement the EV plan for the company in the future. So now we'll do the next questions. So if you compare, it's inevitable that you know you have to compare PTG with the PTT Mobile, the new listed company. So if you look at the non-oil business, right? PTT OR basically act as a landlord. They don't do their own convenience stores, they don't do their own, you know, uh, non-oil business except coffee. Uh, they collect the rent, right? They rent out the space. But PTG did the opposite. They do everything by themselves, right? So, why do you think they, they choose that route, and you know which model is better? From my opinion, the company owned and operate is the key success strategy of PTG since its benefit is that the company can maintain control as well as improve its service quality as well as the operational efficiency. Moreover, PTT can reap all the benefits without sharing with partners. But this, I mean, just looking at this chart right here, why waste the time? Why waste all that time managing people and inventory of all these items and stuff? Why not just become a landlord and lease out the space and focus on the core operation? Just explain why they're doing that, besides just that, you know, it's what they're doing. But from a financial perspective, from an analysis perspective, why? In terms of business fundamental, since its target customer is far away coal, commercial vehicle as well as pickups, they so they implement a strategy and set a price in both oil non and non-oil to suit its customer as well as the location is suitable for going to fuel the tank as well as grab some coffee. Yep, yeah, but what you're talking about is the fact that they want to have services around, which I agree with. But the question I'm asking is, why do they have to manage that? It's just a huge headache. So as my colleague has mentioned, if you expand through the company owned company overlay, you will get the full profitability while the dealer or dealer overlay, you have to share the profit. And we think that with the upcoming trend of the forecard retail or the grocery in the service station, it outperformed the retail industry in Thailand. So if PTG can expand the max mark becoming a store and also the Pai Thai coffee shop, it can gain more revenue from that. So let's go back to that, that chart we were just looking at. Is what you're saying that the, if we look at the revenue share of that part of the business, it's small, but are you saying that that part of the business is highly profitable and therefore the profit contribution is much higher than the revenue contribution or that it will be? It is going to be. So I, I, I guess the, the real question here is that, you know, there's a lot of CDS operators in Thailand. Yeah. 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 Not just yeah. 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 right? So why do you think PDG as an oil retailer can operate convenience stores more efficient, more efficiently than, than those professional guys. Did did the map with you know based on the track record, did they generate better returns from running that one max mark compared to those guys? So if you look at the past performance of the PTG, the revenue from the non our business in the CVS and also the coffee shop. It grew at a double digit rate at 25% CAGR. And we think that even though the PDG overlaid by its own, its own, it can still can maintain this growth because PDG has its own service station and also the target group of the PDG is commercial vehicle. So we think that this will benefit PDG as this user will come and use the non on business services. Time is up for Q&A session. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
And I would just add one other thing. Remember, whenever you're in a competition, you want to think of the judge as your friend, not your opponent. And that means when a judge asks a question, what you may want to do is even walk up closer to that specific judge and make an even clearer connection with that judge, rather than feeling, you know, nervous. Don't, don't come downstairs. <laughs> <laughs> Just come a little bit down. Engage, engage the judge when they ask. Okay, if it's not it for your feedback, uh, we have two minutes left. But uh, if you have, have nothing, so thank you, Team A, for the presentation. You can stay in this room to watch another team. So, yeah. Thank you very much.